Well, welcome to Hi. Declare His Glory Saturday night. We have we have a couple here that have a middle name that's the same. I'll let you guys kind of figure that out. But I want you to know it's like the dawn in the morning. That is such a refreshing, refreshing time. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. I'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. But we have Trevor and Tiffany. You know, uh, Butler from. Uh, Cirrus, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's about an hour and twenty minutes from here, I think. Yeah, because you can't go straight. That's it. Right. I was just saying that on the way here. There should be a road. It, it, there, there's a curve. Yeah, it's have, a curve. It, it's like a, a curve that you have to do to either north or south, east or west. Yeah. It's a curve. So it's a curve. sometimes uh, the shortest distance between two points is a curve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to get over the mountains, the rivers, and anything else in between. That's right. So I'm excited tonight because uh, we're having a, a, a special time, and we're just, isn't it nice that whatever the nations are that are joining in, that we're going to have a workshop, a lifestyle uh, of what worship is all about, but uh, Tiffany's going to be teaching on um, a love, a love, a, the love poem or a love from... The Father's heart. Yeah. And uh, and then they're going to flow into worship afterwards, and we're going to flow in that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And it's going to stick to us, right? It is. It's going like, to stick like glue. Twenty four seven burn, like you've yes. heard of, and we're yeah. just going to be part of that. Yeah. Amen. So as we <clears throat> enter in, the Lord had given me a scripture for today, mm-hmm. and it's Isaiah sixty five verse eight, mm-hmm. five to eight in there. It says, "The cluster anointing is going to." break forth and I have saved this new wine till now <laughs> the cluster anointing from the north to south the east and west all around the world the cluster anointing that you're going to receive that God is pouring out so prepare Amen. yourself because the Lord has Amen. saved the best wine until now and Pentecost Amen. is coming so bless you uh, Trevor you. and Tiffany thank you so much for, for joining us and uh, at Holy Spirit Sands and Resurrection Life Ministries what, yeah. what, what's the name of your ministry Good question. Oh, how, how, how can we support you? Uh, um, do you have I, an email that they can send and support well, you with funds? You, or? No. Okay, so just no. if you send it to resurrectionlife90 at gmail.com and you want funds to go to Trevor and Tiffany, just say it needs to go to Dawn. <laughs> Either D O N or D W N, that doesn't matter, it's still going to work. We're going to get it to them That's 100%. So, so bless you as we enter forth Thank into this teaching. Thank you so teaching. much. Awesome. Thank you. And we're calling you Rabboni. Rabboni. Okay, that means spiritual teacher. All right. And we're ready to No receive. pressure, no pressure. Okay. Well, okay. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, I just pray you would come, you would give me your words tonight, that you would anoint every word I say tonight, God, that your spirit would be in this place, and we know it is. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you. I just want to thank Ray and Leslie and the team here for allowing me to come and teach tonight. And it's been a while since I've taught, so I'm excited, you guys. I love I love talking about the Word. I love sharing on the Word. I love teaching. Oh, my gosh. It's one of my favorite things. And I absolutely love Jesus, and I love worship. So, I mean, really, it's just about Jesus. But I love worship. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um... If you don't know me, I thank you so much, Ray, for that wonderful introduction. Um, Me and my husband, Trevor, we were the directors of Burn 24-7. If you haven't heard of that ministry across the nations, it is a worship and prayer ministry across the world. And so we did that for about six years, I guess it was, um, bringing worship and prayer to the province of Manitoba. So that was really an honor to do. Um, We felt actually in 2020 to step out of that. We did a house of prayer for a while. And now God is kind of rebirthing that in us. So we're really excited about that. So I thought that was funny when when Pastor Ray said, what is your ministry name? Because I'm not quite ready to, to, to release all that yet. But, um, but it's coming. And so uh, really what I personally do is I'm itinerant. So I travel around. I lead worship in different churches. Um, right now it's been mostly in Manitoba. I used to go to Saskatchewan as well. And... Um, yeah, and I would love to share on kind of my journey uh, in worship. And, you know, I'd like to tell a little bit of my personal story in it, but also we're going to be really, really heavy in the Word today. So I apologize, but I don't, because if we don't get our stuff out of the Word, it's just my opinion, and nobody wants my opinion. Um, so <laughs> literally every, when I was preparing this, you guys, this is so funny. I was doing this on Friday, and... Um, 
And then I got a chance to listen to some of Pastor uh, Ralph's teaching this morning or this afternoon. If you haven't had a chance to go listen to that, please go back and watch the replay because it is so good. I I just I think your teaching is so. Um, whenever I watch it, I just feel the Father's heart, and so I love that you taught on that today because it's it really touches my heart to hear your teaching, and um, I love that you're very based in the Bible as well. So thank you for that. But anyways, it it's very related to what I'm going to talk about tonight, and so I was I watched five minutes and I thought, oh. That is too funny. Isn't that how Holy Spirit works? You know, he's just like, this is the message for the people today. And, um, you know, I I operate in the prophetic quite heavily, as well as the apostolic. And um, tonight is going to be a little different. It's going to be a little more devotional. And that's what I really want to focus on. But I did feel I asked I asked the Lord for a word for this you know, for this meeting tonight, basically. And um, I'm like, isn't there anything more jazzy? (laughs) Do you guys, isn't that bad? I'm like, I want something like juicy. And he's like, no, I just really, this is what he said. Let me get to it. Because, you know, when you say that you're going to speak for the Father, you better be sure you're speaking for the Father. Amen? Um, You know, and this is simply as simple as he said it to me was that he wants to bring us into a deeper place of intimacy with him. And, you know, that's not a new message. I've I've preached this message before. I've I've heard it many, many times. Um, But I feel like God wanted to remind us of some really basic basics today. And, you know... I struggle with that because I'm like, hey, I want a fiery word. I want like something new, like nobody's ever heard before. And he's like, no, I have these basic things that I want to remind people today because many of us have been through a lot of hardships. Um, Many of us, well, we've all gone through COVID. Um, Many of us are living in third world countries, not us, but there are people online living in third world countries. Um, There are people, I believe, tonight that are going to tune in and maybe on the replay that don't even know Jesus. And so I really feel like before we can talk about, oh, worship, let's raise our hands, all these things. Do you know Jesus? Because that's what worship is about. It's about Jesus. That You know, we we have to be careful because we can get to the point where we idolize worship. And worship becomes like a thing that we're seeking after, right? And it's almost like, oh, the worship was so good today. I love, wasn't the worship good? Like, oh, I could get into it. It's not about you. <laughs> and, and I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir because I have said it too. Like, oh, I like the worship in that church today. That was good. Or I'll go up to a worship leader. Oh, your worship is so anointed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So there's some basics we need to just talk about. And the first thing I just want to share with you um, is my life first, because it's it, it's not about me, I know. But <laughs> my life first, look at this. This is my Bible. <laughs> you can tell I have read this life verse so many times. And um, in the house of prayer, in that concept of what we do a lot of times is worship with the word, where we actually worship with the word. And so I have worshipped this word so many times. I've actually been written little songs, you know. So that is a really, as a side note, a really beautiful way to express your worship to and of God, of Jesus, is simply by singing his word. Well, you know, why do we need to make up songs that are about us or about, you know, not that new songs are not good, and we'll get into that, but, but there is scripture that says to sing the Psalms. And the Psalms were actually songs. Um, so I love doing that. And like I said, I don't know what my little songs were, but you know, these could be like album favorites, you know, I don't know, but I just love putting music to the songs, Psalms. Um, so my life verse is Psalm 27 and it is verse four. And I love that Psalm 27, four, it's like 27 hours, you know, I don't know, <laughs> or 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what I want to say. Worship. So this scripture says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. That is, Amen. right? If, if you could encompass the heart of a worshiper in one scripture, that is it. 
This is the desire of my heart and what I hope to impart to other people. Really what my passion is into is to impart a love for the Lord, to impart a love and a desire to want to worship him and an ease to enter into that. And really to um, focus on the one thing, the one thing is Jesus and to be ministering to the Lord. So, you know, there's so many things I can chat about you guys. Um, I have teaching on fivefold worship leaders. That's something not a lot of people teach on. Um, you might see if you've watched me lead worship, I lead worship apostolically sometimes. Has anyone heard about that before? Um, where you might have seen that last time I was here, where I decree and I declare things over areas to help break things off. So people might be like, hmm, she's not really worshiping. No, I felt an assignment of the Lord to come into a region to do a job, to do a job. And there's times and places and seasons for different type of worship. Now, when I'm doing apostolic worship, I wouldn't necessarily call it worship. You know, there, there can be worship intertwined in it, but I am declaring things out to break things off an area. There's also prophetic worship where you are prophesying through song and love that. There's so much I can get into, but you know what we'll do is we'll break this up into teaching on each and every type of worship. But you know, the main thing about worship is to minister to the Lord. That is true worship. That is true worship. Um, you know, there's evangelical worship where you are, you know, you're singing songs that are more reaching out to the audience. You know, you're hoping to see souls saved. And that's okay, too. There's a time and place for that type of music. Places like that might be like tent meetings or, um, you know, like outreaches in Africa. Different things like that where you can do a combination of things. But really what I want to focus on tonight is ministry to the Lord. One thing that I've desired that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. So I love David. I love King David. He is my jam. And we're going to get, we're going to talk about him in a little bit. But I guess what I want to kind of start with here, <clears throat> I got to keep on track. Right? I could talk about worship till. I can talk about worship in Jesus till the cows come home. And I'm literally having like, I'm having like a hot flash. I apologize. <laughs> My lady's in the back and feel me right now. Um, so I really, you know, I want to start and I know I don't have too much time here tonight on the teaching end, but I really want to start this um, and tell you guys that it's a love story. Worship is a love story story the bible the bible the word is a love story do you anybody in the room here tonight or online do you guys have like your favorite love story like i don't know if you read romance novels or if you like is it okay to call them chick flicks <laughs> is that pc i don't know but you know what i mean anybody have a favorite movie favorite book? oh ray lady in the trap especially when he pushed the, the I love the spaghetti. Oh, oh. yeah. That's always been my love one. Oh, and you've been kissing for how many years? So you know about romance. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 53 years kissing. 53 years kissing. <clears throat> so, you know, this book, Worship Jesus, it's all a love story. Um, really, the love story starts in Genesis. And it goes to Revelation. It starts at the beginning, it goes to the end, and it doesn't ever end. And that's the cool thing. It's way better than the lady in the tramp. <laughs> you know, and this is what I want to share with you guys tonight, and especially those of you online that need a reminder, but also those of you online that don't know this, but the creator of the universe. Like, let's get an actual revelation tonight in our minds of this, because I know we know it if we're Christian or we've been Christian for any length of time. Um... It, it blows my mind. <laughs> it blows my mind. Okay, I'm preaching a little different. I'm teaching a little different than Pastor Ray tonight, but it does. It blows my mind that the because I have you guys been watching the Northern Lights lately? Okay, for all my uh, friends out there from India and different places, we I don't know about you guys, but we have had an amazing Northern Lights here in Manitoba and across Canada, and even into the states and stuff. And I, I love the Northern Lights. I've always had 
the soft spot in them because my dad who's passed away now it's so one of the things we used to spend time together doing is we go to the lake and then he'd be like hey because he was kind of an adventure guy he'd be like hey let's take the truck out into the bush and let's just like turn our lights off and like you know and i was like eight you know and so it was adventure for me and like let's like lay on the top of the vehicle and like watch another lights and so i have like such a soft spot memory of my father my earthly father doing that with me and, and even though i wasn't a christian at the time i was like my mind was blown <laughs> once again i just remember that and just being like wow you know i i knew about god i went to church i went to a lutheran church with my grandparents so it wasn't like i was completely you know but i didn't have a relationship with jesus at the time but i remember thinking wow god's big like he's big and this is what i want us to know tonight is the god who made all that it actually says in psalms and i don't know if i wrote down the scripture but i'm just thinking of it that he's a star breather. God is a star breather. He breathed the stars. So how big is God of his breath has breathed the universe? Like that goes on and on for infinity. So let's just, I just pray spirit of wisdom and revelation. You come tonight, Holy Spirit, and just give us a revelation tonight of the immensity, the beauty, the, the majesty of, of God the Father and the beauty of Christ tonight and that he loves you so much and all he wants is to be with you. The star breather wants to be with you. Wants to be with you, Pastor Ray. He wants to be with you. Like, isn't that, like, put your name in there. The star breather. Well, let's give some names to God. Who is God? There's so many names, and we don't have time to go through them all, but, you know, El Shaddai, he's Lord God Almighty. He's El Elyon, the Most High God. Adonai, Lord Master, he's Yahweh, Lord Jehovah. He created everything, obviously, you and everything around you, and he just wants to be with you. That's it. That's it. There we go. I just preached the whole Bible. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gone. I'm out of here. So let's go to Song of Solomon, um, chapter 2, verse 10. We're going to dive into a lot of scripture. And by the way, I did write down what scripture that is um, about him breathing the stars is Psalm 33, 6. So if you're someone that loves to watch the stars, you um, want to see where that comes from. You can always look there on your own. So a Song of Solomon or Song of Songs 2.10 says, let's go here. All right, so this is, this is God talking to you tonight. My beloved spoke and said to me, and you can put your name in there, said to you tonight, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, and the time of singing has come. You know, but what I love about this the most is rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Just come away with me. He wants to be with you. He loves you. He came for you. He came for you and he has come for you now. No matter what's going on in your life. Maybe you don't know him. Maybe you just were scrolling Facebook and you happened upon this live video or YouTube. And, you know, he, he came for you while you're still in your sin and your compromise. Um, he wants to be with you in your work, in your family life, in your valleys and on your mountaintops. So let's go to this scripture higher. I want to kind of look at the very beginning of this love story. We're going to just go through a couple scriptures here. Genesis 3, uh, verse 8. Genesis 3, verse 8, which is the very first, um, the very first book in the Bible. And this to me is kind of, a, it, this is a really great example of a scripture of, um, of the beginning of this story. And so I want you to know tonight that God created you to walk with him. He created you to walk with him. A lot of times we wonder, what are we on earth for? Like, why are we here? Have, have you guys ever asked yourself those questions? Or maybe you are currently now, and it could have to do with your, your career or relationship status or something like that. And those are fair. But what you really are on earth for is to give glory to God. You're really on earth. You were really created to worship the Lord. And so he created you to walk with him. He didn't create you to do, well, I mean, he did. He gives you passions and things in your heart and things to do on this earth, which may include your work in life and stuff. But 
what your real purpose is. Do you guys remember back in the day, like when I was first saved, there was a book called, I think it was called Purpose Driven Life. Do you guys remember that? That was like all the hoopla in every church. It wasn't the church we went to. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I remember, because I, I was just newly saved, and I was like, okay. I mean, I had my Bible, but I was like, Purpose Driven Life. I'm going to read this book, and I'm going to know my purpose. You know, and um, I always was looking for it in so many places. I thought, well, if I had this career or that career or moved here or moved there, and, you know, I'm going to get my purpose in line. And what God showed me, and I'm 52 years old, is finally I get it. <laughs> Doesn't matter if I move here, there, anywhere, or what job I have. But he has created me to worship him. And, you know, there's other things, but the main thing is to worship him. And that is your purpose as well. So if you've, if you've forgotten or you're like, what am I even here for? I don't even know if I should be alive anymore. You are here for a reason. You're here for right now for this time and place to worship God and to bring him glory. So in Genesis 3, 8, it says, let's read this. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Who's they? Adam and Eve. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, there's a whole story to that very last part of that scripture, which we're not going to get into that part tonight. But what I want to talk about is that part that they heard this. Listen to this. Let me say it again. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking. Have you guys ever read over that and missed it? Like God was walking on the earth. Amen. Is that just me that kind of got that visual today? <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, God was walking on the earth, the star breather, the like Yahweh, like what is happening? So this is at the beginning of time. All he wanted, he created Adam and Eve to have relationship with him. And he literally walked with them mm -hmm. like yeah. i hope we can get a revelation of this tonight from here to here like we might be like oh no, i've read that scripture a million times but in our hearts he walked with them on the earth did he need to no he obviously wanted to walk with his people he created because he has such an overwhelming desire for relationship Amen. and can you imagine with the sound i'm all about the sound right like I, I, my husband's on this, on the, he serves with me in worship. A lot of times you'll see me because I happen to be on the stage, which I'm not a huge fan of stages. I was actually thinking today, I'm going to bring keeper down here. We're just all going to kumbaya together. But he's always serving in the back on sound because I have like, I think it's because of my calling, but my ear is always like, oh my gosh, what is that sound? Like, what? I just annoy him. I'm like, can you turn that sound off? Whatever that is. Yeah. He's like, what? Anyways, um, but can you imagine what the sound of God walking would be like? And there's a sound in worship that we are releasing into the atmosphere to not only change ourselves. Okay, we're going to get to this in a minute here, but it, it, it changes ourselves, but it also changes. And I, I'm not going to use the word atmosphere. I'm telling you what, you guys, I've been in apostolic churches for so many years. I've gone in and out. I've been in um if evangelical churches i've been in the anglican church i've been in the lutheran church i spent the last i want to say since COVID started in so many different types of churches seeing the body of christ how they worship and the beauty in all different types not just what maybe i do in the charismatic church but um but even in litur liturgy like more traditional type churches anyways as a side note we can teach on that another night but um, what was my point with that? I just squirreled. I do have a squirreling issue. You will notice that. I'll be like, squirrel. I'm over here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, the whole worship the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Yes, it doesn't matter what do not. And so some of you might be coming on here tonight that, um, oh, I know what I was saying. But some of you might be coming on here tonight that are not, you know, are in different types of churches. This is for all of us. This is for all of us. Amen. So I just, the reason why I was kind of being a little bit about atmospheres, I know it can get a little overused in the, <laughs> in the apostolic movement, but you know, it's true. And I'm going to go into scripture of how worship changes yourself and it changes places. Um, so that's a little bit better way to, for me to put it tonight. So yeah, so he, this is where this love story starts. God created Adam and Eve. 
and walked with them in the cool of the day. That was his desire before sin entered into our world. That was his desire, period. But it never, it didn't, when sin entered into the world, his desire never changed. It didn't change for us. Amen. It's still the same desire. And I'm going to show, I'm going to prove it tonight. I'm going to prove it. All right. So <clears throat> let's move on to the next scripture. Let's go to Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8. Which is more towards the back of your Bible, if you're not quite sure. And then watch me be the last one to find it. Romans 5, 8. And thanks for bearing with me. I've had a cold all week, so I'm just pushing through. And God's healing me. Amen. Especially as I bring this word. Okay, so... This is a really good reminder he wants to give you tonight as well within this love story is, where is it here? But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is love. Amen. That is love. This is the story of love. And I'm just going to cruise through some of these because I have quite a, quite a bit I want to share here, but... Um, he came to set you free and to bring you home. That's in John 3.16. We probably all know that off by heart. That was my mom's absolute favorite scripture. And do I know it off by heart? No. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Just let me read it for you quickly. Like I said, some of you are going to be like, I know this. But we should always be preaching the gospel. We should always be sharing the good news. We should always be relating anything we teach back to the Lord. Amen. I think sometimes we can get a little bit off kilter when it's like, hey, I'm going to teach on worship and it becomes its thing unto itself. That's what I've seen in the worship movement a bit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So while you were still in your sin, and maybe you are right now, God sent his only son to die for you so that you could be brought back into that relationship that he wanted to originally have in Genesis with you. Okay. He came to set you free and to bring you home. Okay. That's John three sixteen. He wants to be where you are. Go to John seventeen twenty four. And I love, or sorry, Joel, or no, John, good grief. What am I talking about? John 17, 24. I love this scripture. This is the famous, quote unquote, um, prayer of Jesus. Uh, sorry, John, just John 17. So where Jesus prays for himself. Um, but then when you get to verse 24, um, he, you know, in this section here, he's praying for all believers. Okay. And in this section here, he says, listen to this father, he's praying to God, his father. Now, and he says, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me. Okay. I'm going to go on for, but hang on father. I desire. So what is the desire of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yahweh, mm -hmm. that they also whom you have gave me may be with me. Goes back to that love story. He wants to be where you are. Okay? And he wants his dwelling place to be with you. That's in Revelation 21.3. Let's go there quickly. Revelation 21.3. <clears throat> and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Oh, isn't that beautiful? At the end of the story... This is what he want. This has been his desire from the beginning is to just have a relationship with you. Amen. And this is what will, will happen. He's preparing a place for believers right now. So if you are a believer or you are going to be tonight, we pray. Um, he, Jesus is preparing a place for you right now. That's John 14, 3. And I also want you to know tonight that you are God's beloved. You are God's beloved. That is Song of Solomon back there again. Um, verse 6 3. I'll actually just leave it at that. So the question then becomes to me, because I'm I'm very creative, but I'm also a little analytical. The question becomes to me then how it, it, the question isn't not why do we worship or how do we worship? But the question is how can, how can't we? How can't we? 
the gratitude that comes from the revelation of knowing that God, the star breather, right? You know, and I know that's not one of his official names, but it just, it gets me because of my personal story. But that God, the creator of everything, wants to just be with me. Like, who am I? I'm like this little speck in, have you guys seen videos and pictures of the universe? Like, isn't it amazing? It just goes on and on. And you're like, oh, and then there's another galaxy and there's like a billion trillion stars in that one. And then it's, it's amazing to me. And like, so what am I am like, like a drop of sand, right? On a beach. And so how do we not spend our time in our lives worshiping him? But this is what I want to say, you guys. And this is something that has really hit me over the last while well, I developed a um a course for worship leaders so by the way um Pastor Ray was asking how you can support me I really I really don't want financial support that's something I've decided I don't really I, I never want to take money for teaching or anything like that but I do have a course that you can take if you're somebody that feels like you were made to be a worship leader um there's no charge or anything for it but when I was developing that this is what I was thinking, you know, you will not worship past your revelation of who he is. And that's why I spent so much time on that. It's pointless for me to come up here and start telling you, okay, all right, these are the top 10 things you can do to worship God. And here's your checklist. And this is how we do it. And then, okay, everyone get on the floor, lay down. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like when you start to think about the lifestyle of worship, well, we need to live a lifestyle of it, right? And we're, well, I'll tell you about that scripture quickly here. But it's interesting because you're not going to surpass your level of worship of Jesus unless you get a real, unless your revelation of who he is increases. How do you get that revelation? Anybody? <laughs> get hungry and go deeper. Thank you, the word. And it's all because when you get hungry and you go deeper, you hunger for the word. And I pray that right now. I just pray, Holy Spirit, you would give each of us that's in this room and online and, you know, on the, on the replay, that you would increase your hunger, that our hunger for us to want to read this. Because I feel that is the biggest barrier. I really do. There, I went through a long season where I was like, this is so boring. Like, what is this? You know, and I, you know, I had to find different... Um, uh, what do you call it? Like types, you know, you can get a million different types of Bibles. Um, I had to find ones that worked for me and that might be for you. I know if you're in a developing country there, it's hard to get Bibles in some places and you can, I just want to share this with you quickly. You can get an app on your phone called YouVersion and it's free. So if you do have access to a phone or an iPad or a computer or something like that, you can get all the versions for free on on that. So if you are living in a country where you don't, you know, you're like, oh, I don't have a Bible or something. Um, you know, if you can get access to anything, you can get something for free there. Or you can just ask us to send you one. I don't know. Depends where you live. But um, my point is, though, is that we're going to get a greater revelation of who he is by reading this. Amen. And that's when I in 2020, when COVID hit, we were all stuck in our houses. Remember that? Or did we all block it out? <laughs> It's like, ooh, don't remember. Um, anyways, when we were all stuck in our houses, I just, I read the Bible for a whole year, right? And I know a lot of us do that. We'll go on a one-year devotional thing or something like that. But for me, it was a big deal because I had gone through this stage of like, oh, it's boring. Like, or, well, it's not boring. I mean, I love the Bible and I've obviously spent time in it. But um, I mean, reading the whole thing and getting a grasp of it from beginning to end and, and really digging deep into it in, in studies. And uh, when I read it, I was like, I don't even believe half the stuff I believed before I did this. Like, it's crazy, you guys. I really encourage you to just pick, you know, even on version, you can get a one-year Bible devotional or something. But just pick up a Bible and start at the beginning. Just start at the first page. Just as long as you can, just read a little bit each day and just go for it. Because you, your mind, here we go again, but your mind is going to be blown. It is. You are going to fall in love, again, you're going to fall in love so deeply with this man, Jesus, just by doing that. And you're going to get hungrier and hungrier. That is what is going to increase your, your worship and bring you to another level, is knowing who he is. Because once you know who he is, 
You can't help but worship him. In fact, my question is, how do we go to work? <laughs> like, <laughs> I have a lot of people in my life that are like, oh, I don't want to come do a prayer room. I'm like, ew, that sounds boring. I'm like, what do you do? You just sit there and kumbaya for it? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what I want to do. Um, and it depends, it depends how much time you spend here as to what side of that conversation you're going to be on. Like, oh, I got to go to work today, or oh, I got to go to the prayer room, or I got to go to church, or I got to go to the worship night, right? Like, so this is my number one thing I would say to you. If you want to be a worshiper, you have to know Jesus, right? And this is it. This is it for me. Yes, he speaks to us prophetically when you are, you know, when you come to him and you know him, he will speak to you. Worship is a relationship, so we worship him. And to me, it's like a rain cycle, you know, like a picture of a rain cycle. You know, you worship the Lord and he communicates down to you. So that's why a lot of times you'll see in worship services, you know, you might, well, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but in different types of churches, you'll see worship leaders worshiping once they get in well they'll be praising worshiping once they get into the glory the lord will start to speak to them and they might start to sing their songs out it's coming from the perspective of the lord so that's prophetic worship is when you hear from god and it's not a weird thing it's not it's not a not biblical thing it's not a strange thing reason why it happens like i said is because that's what he wants. He wants relationship with you. He doesn't just want some zombie robots that are like, okay, must go to stage, sing a song, do five, do three fast, too slow. <laughs> three fast, too slow, and get off. Thank you for having me. He, he wants relationship and he wants, you know, there's certain people called worship leaders. Uh, that's a whole other teaching. But listen, we're all worship leaders. We're all worship leaders. And he wants us to join together and to communicate with him because that's all he's ever wanted. And then he's going to communicate to us. And, oh, you guys, I have to share this story quickly. This is a side note. I could probably talk all night. But I went, I went and I led worship down in Pittsburgh. And they were gracious to have me there. And, like, it was a gong show, you guys. It, listen to this. So I get down there. If they come on here, love you guys so much. But it was a gong show. Get there. You know, it was one of those typical situations where you get there and it's like nothing's working. Like the sounds not working. Oh, you can't put my songs in, you know. And I was, I was like, this was like five years ago or something like that. So as I was a newer worship leader, they're like, no, we don't have your songs entered in. They're like, so they had all my music at the back, trying to type it in, <laughs> you know. And I was like, I'm up at the front. There's all these people that came because they had posters up. Someone's coming from Canada lead worship. I was like, don't advertise me. This is this is not good. So I'm up at the front go and nothing's working. And I just had to wing it. And I was like, well, guess we're just going to sing something. So I just started playing. And I'm going to actually do that tonight. I'm just going to start playing four chords. Just play some music. And we're just going to start singing in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you where that's scriptural when I get to it. But <laughs> it's scriptural. It's not my idea. Um, and we're just going to start singing. And this is the beautiful thing that happened. What I want to tell you about that situation was I had to rely on Holy Spirit so much, which is what we should always do as servants of God, whether you're worship leading as a musician, as a preacher, teacher, whatever it is you're doing. But sometimes we're like, okay, I got my songs. I'm nervous. I'm in this new city. I'm just going to sing them. Um, and I had to really rely on the Holy Spirit. And so he pushed me to another level because I had to just sing in the spirit. Well, then I'm, I'm like, okay, we're overdoing these four chords. Well, this is the beautiful part about it. And what I mean when I say we're all worship leaders, whether you're given that title and put on a stage or not, is nothing, the sound wasn't really working. So I was like, kumbaya up there by myself. And then all of a sudden I could hear Susie Smith over in the corner singing something. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to pull off the sound a little bit. Ooh, she's, a, she's got a song from Holy Spirit right now. And just ping, 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 ping. I'm like, I'm coming off my instrument. So then I came down here. I don't know if you guys know Heidi Baker, who she is. Yeah. Yeah. Reminded me of that so much. That I'm not, I don't think I'm Heidi Baker. But I, I just sat on the floor, and we just all sang with no music. And it, the Holy Spirit was just pinging across the room to different people. I didn't, Holy Spirit was literally leading the worship. I, it wasn't about me. 
All I did was get out of the way. Just got out of the way. I'm like, okay, uh, I don't know what's going on. Nothing's working. So we're going to try a new way of doing things. And, you know, your song matters. Your, your sound matters. I can't tell you how beautiful the songs were that came out of that. Did everyone have a gorgeous singing voice? Oh my gosh, no. Like, there's some people that just should not be amplified. <laughs> That's the only difference, right? Some people just, you know, I'm not saying I'm a, you know, fantastic singer, but I'm just saying some people just maybe shouldn't have this microphone on. That's all. But, and Heidi Baker said that, so I can say it. <laughs> and she's nice. Okay, she's a nice lady. But that's the truth, you know. Um, I, I heard the most, and I knew they were from the Lord. You know, they were just the most beautiful songs. So I, I long for that to happen again. Sunday mornings, whatever it may be, where we're not just so, you know, into our agenda of what the morning's going to be as worship leaders. As a little side story, but. Well, I'm going to try and wrap this up. How much more time do I have, Pastor Ray? All right. Oh, my, oh, okay. Well, I got lots more to share. <laughs> oh, goodness. Arlene doesn't start till 10 tomorrow. <laughs> We're used to doing the all-nighter ones. So if you guys don't know some of our, our very first burn we did, it was at Bethel, and I still remember it. It was such a fun memory because um, it was our longest one, and I was still, how old were we when we did that one? Like, that was, like, six years ago or something. Like, we were old. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're doing burns. Most people that lead burns are, like, 20s and 30s. I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> the reason why we retired is because we're just too tired. And we were, like, 27 hours, and we stayed up for the whole thing. We had a kid running around, and, um, and the amount of organization it takes to really provide a safe space for people to enter into worship and to feel, especially for newcomers, to feel that they can enter in and pray and be in safety um is is a level of behind the scenes work that you do with that but but what was my point with that with 27 hours worship i don't know <laughs> i don't know where i was going with that you can continue to preach and worship and oh that was the point thank you just stay in his presence yeah because i was like i i used to do all night things but i no is it time for bed yet <laughs> i'm just like Oh, gosh. I just pray right now, God, that you would refresh us, you know, because that's really a real thing that you would refresh our bodies and our minds and, you know, quicken us like to quicken our bodies to be able to worship you for long periods of time, to read the Bible for long periods of time and to not get exhausted and bored and all those things. Um, because we do we deal with the physical body. Um, OK, so you won't worship Pastor Revelation of who he is. Um, I just want to go quickly to Revelation 15, 4. Revelation 15. Am I is am I hitting any things good here or am I kind of am I okay? Okay. What why did I have this down? <laughs> I'm like, what did I write this for? Okay, 15 4. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you alone are holy. Um I think what I was getting at there when I was preparing this is that some of you out there, this is just what I was sensing, haven't even heard the good news. Um, you haven't heard how, you know, this is the this is the love story I wanted to share with you. Because once you get this revelation, you will go to another level in worship because your gratitude will just be, will take you there. And you will continue, the hunger, because I, I, a lot of times we talk, okay, we're hungry, what does that mean? We're just like, oh, God, we want more of you. And then you, and then, okay, in heaven right now, did you know there's 24-7 worship going on around the throne? So when we worship, we're actually entering into throne room. Amen. Depending on what kind of worship you're doing. If you're doing throne room worship, you're probably entering into worship. And throne room worship is very based on the holiness, the worthiness of Jesus, very centered on Jesus, not on ourselves. Um, but what is my point with that, Trev? <laughs> Um, my point is that, oh, there's living creatures there that have eyes yeah. all around. When I first, cause I thought that was the weirdest thing. Like, do you guys ever read the Bible and you go, this is, like, how is this boring? This is the craziest. When I read this from front to back, and I know that's not like, who cares? A lot of people have done that. But I was just like, what is happening here? This is the most interesting book I've ever read. 
ever. The, the stories are amazing. But there's creatures in heaven with eyeballs all over them. When I first got saved, yes, I thought that was the weird. I'm like, what am I? Is this a cult? What is this? Eyeballs. But you know what? They literally, they look on the Lord 24 hours a day. Well, not that there's the same days there, but 24 hours a day, seven days a week for eternity. And they continually see new revelation of who he is. Continually unfolds. Continually unfolds. And that's why they have to make, and if they turn this way, they're still seeing God. Oh, Jesus on the throne. Oh, what? Oh, oh, there's something else. Oh, and then, and then, you know, the, 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 the 24 elders, right? They, then they bow, then they bow down and they throw their crowns down because they're like, whoa, we're not worthy to see all this. Like we're not worthy of the holiness, the purity of who God is. These are the things I've had. I had a pastor a few years ago. Actually, she was one of the ones that kind of, uh, she was actually our first pastor here in, in Brandon when we moved here from Saskatoon. And I, that's where I helped plant a prayer room there. And I was the first intercessory missionary. I would go in there when my son was in kindergarten. So I'd drop him off at kindergarten. And I'd get over to the church at 930 and I'd do a set. I'm like, I'm an intercessory missionary. I'm going to like, you know, I'm planting a prayer room. I don't care. And my pastors at the time, they were like, we love that. Let's do that. They had been at IHOP for quite a while. So I would go down there and I would always, I'd be sitting on my keyboard and that's all I would do. I would just look into the throne room. Just like I could see. And you can too. You might not be considered a seer or something like that, but you can see. Close your eyes when you're worshiping. I just challenge you to do that tonight. And picture, you know, we can all picture things. God's given us imagination for a reason. Picture him, picture Jesus, the man slain, the lamb slain on the throne. The elders, the angels, like thousands and thousands of angels. The, the, the four living creatures with the eyeballs all around. The fire, the, you know, picture that when you're worshiping and you, it will be different for you. It will be different for you. Trust me. If you find yourself tuning out in worship and you're like, Oh, is this over yet? What's, you know, and I'm not judging anyone. I've been in those situations myself and it's because of me. It's not because of the worship leader. It's not because of the song they're singing. It's because of me because my heart has gone dry and I'm not in it. I'm not, I'm not there. I'm dried out. I'm, you know, I'm worried about what's for lunch. I'm hungry. My stomach's growing because I don't eat breakfast. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to challenge you with that little piece of, um, something that would help you is because when I enter into worship as a worship leader, that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at you guys. I don't care. <laughs> Unless I've been on assignment to do something more apostolic or prophetic. And that's different. But generally speaking, when I'm worshiping, I'm looking in the throne room at Christ. And I'm singing songs about him. I'm singing to him. To him. Because that's, I'm, I'm, that's who I'm looking at. If you guys want to enter in with me, praise God. Because that's what I feel like I'm here for, is to help people enter into that relationship with Christ and to worship him easier. But if you don't, that's on you. That's on you, boo. I'm still going to go. Amen. I'm still going. I'm going up. You want to come up higher? Come on up. And we're going to do that tonight, okay? If I still have a voice after this. Um, so, this is another little thing I want to tell you guys, is that... I've asked God this a lot of times, and of course he's directed me to the scripture because he's like, it's right there. Um, how do I love you more? Like, why does it feel like sometimes I'm like, I don't care. Like, I, do you guys ever get like that where and you're just kind of like, don't care, don't care to enter in, got better things to do, I'm going to go do my makeup video or go in the hot tub or, you know, like totally worldly stuff where I'm just like, I'm not saying work is, I'm going to get into work quickly, but um, not saying work is a bad thing, but we can let work take over. Um, but these are just some tidbits to help you to enter into worship easier and to understand the love story that the Father has for you. Um, we love him because he first loved us. And so we need to know this is why I've gone through all, you might be like, oh, I've heard this before. I'm like, why is she going through this? We need to understand and get a revelation of his love, the love of the father for us, because that, Amen. that is how you love him more. 
Because I've, I've gone through many seasons where I'm like, how do I love you more? Like, how do I get over this dry spell? How do I, uh, like, how do I just break through? One tip I'm going to tell you is you got to get in the word. You got to understand even these few scriptures I gave you, get in there, get in there and see how my, and re, you know, Pastor Ralph even talked about it today. See how much the father loves you and wants to be with you. It's because he first loved us. This is scripture. It does not return void. Okay. You guys, this is the truth. That's why we love him. It's not the other way around. We don't like, oh, we got to muster up all this love in our hearts on our, you know, in our own flesh. And then we're like, okay, now I can be a good worshiper. That's not how it works. Ask Holy Spirit to help you. Ask Holy Spirit to help you. He's here to help. Um, ask him to give you, you know, a revelation of who Christ is. And what, like I said, when you're, when you're worshiping, look into the throne room, picture it, imagine it. I know you can do it. Because we're all, we can all picture all kinds of tragedies in our minds. Am I right? Your kid's out 15 minutes longer and you're like, oh my gosh, they've already died, gone to heaven. You know, you're like, <laughs> we can all imagine it. So the question of how to maintain a lifestyle worship, worship becomes not a 12-step program. Even though I could give you a few steps, I could have numbered all those things. I can give you tips and tricks. But for me, it's how can we break away to go to work, to school, or to become any earthly good. Have you guys heard that saying, she's so heavenly minded, she can't, or he, I don't, why am I saying she? They're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. But the thing is, is that God wants us to be earthly good. So this is my mantra. I, I think mantra is probably not a Christian word, but this is my saying that I say, it's so simple. This is what I want to tell you guys. Sit, then go, and repeat that. Sit, go, repeat. What are you living your lifestyle out of? Whether you are a mom or a dad or, a, you know, corporate person, nurse, stay-at-home person, whatever it is you are. What are you living your life out of? Because I tell you what, if it's your own strength, you're going to probably be feeling really dry and crusty right now. So the key is to sit in the presence of God. Spend time worshiping him. I know we've heard this a million times over, but honestly, it's so simple. You know, if you're feeling like you can't enter into worship, if you're feeling your lifestyle is not one of worship, but it's just a work or, you know, wiping baby butts or whatever it is you do, and that's it, get that worship going on in your house. Get it going on in your workplace. Get it you know, if you can't do it, put some AirPod, whatever things, earbuds. I <laughs> say the wrong thing. My son's like, Mom, I'm so not cool. But, you know, put some, put some headphones on. Get some worship going. It will work every time. I promise you. Every time. Get into the presence of the Lord. Um, we know that, you know, we're supposed to love God and then love people, right? So we know what what God's asking us to do is to get into his presence then go out and disciple the nations, which is what, you know, Resurrection Life is doing here online. And so we have to have that balance. If we're just go, go, going, if we just go to work every day, nine to five, nine to 12, midnight, you know, we work when we get home and that's all we do. You're going to find you're worshiping an idol. Ooh, this is a hard word. Because I see it a lot, and I've seen it in myself, I've seen it in other people, is that you end up worshipping work. You end up worshipping what you get out of your job. And we need to keep this love story in mind. We need to get into the word and understand it to um, be able to go out into the world and disciple nations, do the jobs that God has called us to do in the marketplace, which, by the way, you guys, is discipling nations. Marketplace is not anti-discipling nations. Marketplace is important. So if you are a marketplace minister, if you work in business, talk to your girl. I am also very big in the marketplace. And I tell you what, I have met more people through makeup and been able to talk to them about Christ um, than I have just sitting in my house, just kumbaya on my own. But the key is, is you need to sit Sit with God, okay? Get that time carved out, then go. But this is, I think, where we get it wrong. We, well, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Then we go, but then we keep going. We keep going, 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 and we don't repeat it. It's a constant, it's continually infilling 
of the Holy Spirit, a continual infilling of hunger, continual infilling um, and outpouring of ministry to the Lord that is going to um, benefit you in whatever it is you're called to do here, which is discipling the nations. <clears throat> so I hope that little, just remember that, sit, go, repeat. So I have so many things I want to share, but it's going to be for another night. I love the heart of David. Um, I love Mary of Bethany. These are two people in the Bible who um, are really what, how I want to teach people to be like. And, um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that on a different night. If that's okay, we'll do another Saturday night and I'll just do the heart of David and Mary's offering. I have a teaching on that that is just beautiful. And, um, I just don't want to keep you too much longer with the teaching, but, um, I do want to tell you this one scripture because I had mentioned it before is, well, why do we worship in the first place? Obviously gratitude to express our love for him with no agenda, and this is where I get into Mary of Bethany. You know, you look at Mary who poured her ointment out on Christ's feet and, you know, she didn't have any agenda. I find having been in, and this isn't cutting anyone down, but if you've been in the church for any length of time, sometimes there's an agenda that comes with worship. Okay, we're going to worship tonight so we can break through and get healed. That's not bad. I, I, I still do it. But can you imagine what it would be like if we could just, just worship? What if God didn't show up tonight? What if Holy Spirit doesn't come and just wreck us and we're just like not all on fire and we're not all like, what if nothing happens tonight or in your service tomorrow? Do we want to be part of a dead church? It's not really my question, but my question is, is God worthy of our worship enough that it doesn't matter if he gives you something. What if he doesn't heal you? There's lots of us that have dealt with that. What if he doesn't? What if he doesn't like this place up and there's not a million people coming here? What if um, we don't feel any goosebumps? What if we don't like the songs? What if he doesn't increase the numbers in our church? Um, gosh, any other ones? What if he doesn't deliver anyone? What if, what if he doesn't get, give us like a good offering? What if, what if nothing happens? I don't know, right? Yeah. He's still worthy of worship. Amen. He's still worthy of worship. <clears throat> Did you know we're actually commanded to worship? Of course, Pastor Ralph knows that. He's and Pastor Ray. You guys probably all know that, but these are good reminders. We're actually commanded to. But, you know, it's not because he's like some God out there going, oh, I'm so good. I'm so great. You guys better worship me. It makes me feel good. I need some warm fuzzies because you know, Jesus was acting up a little bit today. And, you know, no, that's not why. It's for us. It's so that we can remember to get the one thing, remember we talked about my life verse, that Psalm 27, 4 verse, is so that we can remember to get the one thing right. First things first. First things first. What's first things first, right? When you guys are going about a project, what's the first thing you do? That's how you should view your life. When you're going about, oh, I got to go to work. I got this big project going on. I'm like, gung-ho, what's the first thing you should do? Get your coffee at Starbucks. Yeah. No. Not that. I know that's hard to believe. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> or Timmy's. I'm sorry. I should have said Timmy's. So he's worthy. He's worthy no matter if he does anything. He's worthy of worship. And I have so many scriptures on that. The ones I have written down, you guys can look on your own, is Revelation 4 11, 5 12, John 3 16, 8 12, 11, 25 to 26, Philippians 2 10, 11. But let's go to Revelations 4 11 just quickly here. And I'm going to tell you some good news, because that might have sounded a little depressing. You guys may be like, oh, he's not going to give me anything. Well, he gave you his son. 
You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Like, you woke up today to get your Timmy's because he willed it. <laughs> he is worthy. This is, if you read before this, um, verse 10 says, The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. You think you get bored in a one-hour worship service? You can't do 27 hours at a burn without complaining. I'm talking to myself, okay? But you know what I'm saying? And I know we have physical bodies we have to deal with. It's a little different. Um, in heaven, it won't be the same. We'll have strengthened bodies, but we'll have new bodies. But, you know, it's amazing to me that, that they worship him forever and ever. They don't get sick of saying, holy, holy, holy. Like, what if I just get up here tonight and just sing holy, holy, holy for an hour? Are you guys going to, like, walk out? everyone tunes off like zero viewers but you know that's that's what you're good you're not gonna like heaven too much because that's what's happening you are worthy oh lord you you receive all the glory all the honor all the power because you created all things it's by your will they exist and were created oh it's just amazing and you know i I just had a sense there might be someone struggling with depression online. And this brings me peace because I have had my struggles with depression as well. This brings me peace is to know, well, I was saying this to Trevor. We went to this prayer room in Medicine Hat last week and I was, they were doing 40 days. Okay, I thought 27 hours was great. They're doing 40 days of worship and prayer nonstop. All the churches in Medicine Hat are doing this with uh, Global Prayer House. But we got to go for the kickoff and I didn't even know what was going on. He was there for work and we went and I was like, wow amazing i need this i want this and we went back to the hotel and i was like oh i wish i was just back in you know and it's not about being in a church or a prayer room building it's about being in the presence of god and i thought i was going to bed and i was like oh you know you're in a hotel bed and you're like can't really sleep get comfy and i was like man it just felt so comforting to know there's all these people there praying and worshiping mm. you know a few streets away and i was like yeah, i felt this comfort and if you ever feel alone, if you feel depression and just loneliness come on you, there is this beautiful choir going on right now in the heavenlies. Like you're never alone because Holy Spirit's with you, right? The Lord's with you all the time. So that's the biggest part. But for me, because I'm a worshiper and a musical person, God has that heart of music too. He has a heart in him. And music is very special to him. Worship is to be done with our whole lives, we know. Um, wherever that scripture is here, I'll look for. But but music is special to him. And there has been musical worship throughout the Bible. You know, you can look in. Um, gosh, let me see where that all is here. Is it Chronicles? First and second Chronicles. You know, if you want to look in, um, you know, with David's tent and all of that. But, you know, that's a whole other teaching. Yeah, or first Chronicles 23 and 25. But I just wanted to give that little tidbit of that kind of visual for somebody out there tonight. That if you're feeling alone, I just feel that's going to give you comfort. Is that there's angels, there's there's um, the living creatures, which might not give you comfort. <laughs> no, that's just me. But you know, there's 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 all the angels, and there's Jesus, there's the Father, and there's this musical tribute to the Lord going on around His throne currently. No matter where you are, if you're struggling right now and you you can't sleep, enter into that worship. Enter into that worship with them. Tune in. So I think the rest I'm gonna I'm just gonna kind of skip over tonight, and I'm gonna do another another teaching so I don't lose my voice, and we can worship a little bit through music. Um, but I really want to. There's a couple more things I want to say. Can I say a couple more things? Are you guys getting bored? I felt like it was a little depressing when I was like, what if God doesn't do anything? Like, what if he doesn't come and heal you or deliver you or like increase your numbers or, you know, all the things. And my point with that was that he's not cruel God. Like he's not going to hold back his hand. And he's not saying you got to do this, this, and this to measure up so that I come and show up. Like if you guys don't sing long enough, if you don't sing for 27 hours or 40 days, you know, it's just not going to happen for you. And I just wanted to express the point that he's still worthy of worship, whether he does anything or not in our lives and, or does anything in our buildings or in our worship services or what have you. Um, but, you know, I think the key is it's like the key of David. And that's a whole big teaching. But 
the key of David, you know, I think the key to open and unlock things is that heart, that heart of David, that heart, the heart that to put him first above all things in your life. And that's when he releases his hand because he wants to trust. He, he, he wants to trust us. He wants to know our hearts and that our hearts are for him. And I think when our hearts are pure like David's was, and I mean, David was no angel. Like, what all happened with David? He was like cheating, he was murdering, he was... But David was quick to obey the Lord. He was quick to repent. You know, and like I said, I'm getting into David now, but, but that's a whole nother thing. But listen, that is so key. Obedience is actually how you can worship the Lord. The... If you're one of, because I know I got some practical people in my life not looking at anyone at the back of a soundboard. <laughs> I almost snorted. I stopped myself. <laughs> but you know, if you're if you're a practical person, and I'm not saying it's just men, but sometimes it's men. Sometimes it's a guy in a blue shirt. But honestly, this is for all people, whether you're practical or not. Is that? The first time worship was actually mentioned in the Bible was with obedience. Did you guys know that? Oh, it's a doozy, you guys. First time, okay, a little side note, little side note, but how do you worship? With your lives, Romans 12, 1, uh, Colossians 3, 17. Okay, well, I'm just going to rip through this quick. With music, you can see it, um, you can sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Gosh, guys, I could teach for hours. Um, in the throne room, throughout scripture, if you go into 1 Chronicles 23 and 25, okay? Worship with full abandon, and you can look at the examples of David and Mary of Bethany. Um, might seem, you know, you look at Mary, might seem like it's, it's wasteful, but worship with abandon. Um, worship in spirit and truth, that's John 4, 23 to 24. Worship without agenda, we were talking about. That's like Mary of Bethany. Worship through Christ, not your own self-made religion. And worship to him. And don't be surprised if he sings back to you. That's what spiritual songs are. And like I said, that's biblical. Um, Ephesians 5.19. Worship with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Psalms is the word. Hymns is songs you might just like, here I am to worship. Like we all like songs that have been written down that we've known for decades, right? Spiritual songs are going to be new songs um, given to you by the Holy Spirit. But the last thing I want to say quickly is that obedience key, and that's Genesis 22.5. Let's just turn there quick, and then I have a couple of questions for you, and we're going to move on to worship. Genesis 22.5. <clears throat> Genesis 22. See, you can even sing that. 22.5. <laughs> And Abraham said to his, is this the right scripture, God? What did I say? Genesis 22, 5. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. This is the first time worship was mentioned in the Bible. And we will come back to you. Now, what were they doing? Were they, were they going to Timmy's? No. What were they doing? Do you guys remember? So he was going to, he was obedient to the point, Abraham was obedient to the point of being totally fine to go sacrifice his son, yep. Isaac. Yep. Now, if that doesn't blow your mind tonight, then you got to like, you better check your pulse. Mm. Cause that, that blew, that, that's amazing to me because I have a son, but I'm, Go sacrifice your son tonight, Tiff. Most of what? First of all, I'd be like, boy, I need to get some sleep. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you got to really know the voice of the Lord to be like, okay, I'm going to go up the mountain now and worship. That was worship. That level of obedience. So I, this is what I want to ask you guys tonight. I have so many things I want to ask you tonight, but. I honestly think it takes a certain level of healing in our hearts in order for us to be that kind of obedient. Because you got to trust God the Father with everything you've got. 
you know, because a lot of times we, we come to Christ and we're like, okay, you're the Lord of my life. And that's what it means, right? He's the Lord of your life now. Now he's going to ru- He's going to rule your life. If, you, if you're making a decision, you have to ask him, right? It's not your brain anymore. Thank God. I made so many mistakes when it wasn't him. And, you know, it, it takes, a lot of us is not, have not had good fathers down here. And so it takes it takes a level of healing to I think to be able to come to that point where you can go okay I trust the father the fa- the good father you know because he's not like our earthly dads or some of our earthly dads have been terrible right and he's not like that and that's why it's so important for you guys to read this to read and to understand how much he loves you um. And I really, I want to pray tonight that if that's you, if you feel like you need healing in your heart about the father, if you have wounding, maybe from your your own dad or grandpa or someone, you know, a male figure in your life, I just pray, God, that you would come and heal hearts tonight with the heart of the father, that they would know and have a revelation of really who you are, that you're such a good dad, God, and that you would go deep in our hearts tonight and just um, really, really root out those issues that we have God so that we can fully trust you so we can walk in full obedience to you and that's that's going to be true worship you know we worship with our lives and if we feel like we can't quite get there it's probably because we've got a roadblock there and so I just pray God you'll heal you'll heal hearts tonight even within worship while we just Pour out our song to you, God. And you know what I love, guys, about David is that he wasn't afraid to sing songs about, like, real life stuff. Like, I'm not a fake person. Like, if I have a, like I don't got no problem telling people. We can't dwell in it, but it's it, there's no good in being fake. There's no good in being fake, right? And David was re- as real as a God. He'd just be like ranting and you know ranting about stuff and shaking his fist at god but he always returned to worshiping him always returned to worshiping so if you feel that that really is something about that strikes you i i challenge you to get into the psalms because that's where i found a lot of healing and i can really relate to david as a character i'm like hey that's he's like me he's like me i love the lord but i i can do a little ranting you know and god's okay with it he can handle it he's big he's a big god Um, So I just pray tonight that even while we worship, and tonight's going to be more devotional, you know, we ain't going crazy, we're just, we really just want to enter into a devotional time um, where we're just really looking into the throne room, focusing on him, and that might turn around to him, you know, to us wanting to share um, psalms. Now, psalms can be singing these, and we can do that too, but it can also be singing your own personal story. Right, which is what David did. Those were songs. So can you believe that? People used to sing. Let's find one. Um, Because some of these are great. Like some of these are great. But there's some where he's not having a good day. And they used to sing that. Right? Mm -hmm. Like you imagine you walk into church and someone's up here going, Oh, my coffee was so cold. And I'm having a bad day and people want to kill me. And like that's what... Tough song. 142, thank you. I'm like, I need to find one. 142. All right. So what my point is in this is it's okay to pour out your your personal story, your heart to the Lord. And that's part of the healing journey. I think he's going to take people on too. So tonight, feel free to do that. Um, I cry, this is what Psalm 142 says. I cry out to the Lord with my voice, with my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path in the way in which I walk. They have secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand and see, for there's no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. Like, it's deep. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion. You know, so see, you can see him now coming back. And so, okay. I'm going to sing the truth now about who you are. I said my deal, and now I'm going to pour out my worship and my love for you. And I'm going to declare the truth of who you are through song. 
So I think one night what we'll do is we'll do like a worship with the word night. I'll teach a little bit more on that and we'll do it. We'll just sing the word. And I would love to hear other people too. I'm just like, I should sing. I should sing that today. Oh, sorry. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. A plea for relief from persecutors. And it's a song. So here's some things I want you to kind of just ponder when you go home and you're, you know, cozying up in your bed. I just want to ask, where are you on this love story journey? Maybe you're at the very beginning. Maybe you're just hearing about Jesus and how much he loves you tonight for the first time. Or maybe you've been a Christian for a long time and you're just kind of backslidden away. Or, you know, you're just feeling a little dry. Um, maybe you're halfway through. Maybe you're totally there. You're like in the throne room, you know. Just ask yourself, where are you on this love story journey? And know that it's continual. It's okay if you're at the beginning. It's okay if you were up here and then you've gone back. It's okay. There's something to keep in mind. If you are new to hearing about Jesus tonight, I just want to give you an opportunity to accept him into your life tonight. So if you want to pray with me tonight, I would just love, um, I would love that. And you know, Pastor Ray would, you know, or Pastor Ralph would get you connected, you know, obviously with this church or with the church in your country or wherever you may live, but you can just pray alongside of me um, while I pray tonight. So if you would like to accept Jesus into your life tonight, just hallelujah, there's going to be angels just partying up tonight in heaven. So, you know, just tune into that in the throne room tonight. That's going to, that'll keep you up all night, but we, we just thank you, Lord, for whoever's online that want to give their lives to you tonight, God. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit. We just lift up this person and people tonight to you, God. And so just repeat after me. Just say, I believe, Jesus, that you are, sorry, that you are the Son of God. That you died on the cross. And three days later, you were rose from the dead. And you have gone to prepare a place for me now. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. I love you, and I want to commit my life to you. I want you to be the Lord of my life. So take over my life, God. I give it to you. In Jesus' name, we just thank you, God. Hallelujah. So if you prayed that prayer tonight, let let the pastors know in the comments or if you're on the replay, and um, they will get a hold of you. And you're at the beginning of an incredible journey. Amen. Incredible love story. I mean, that love story started a long time before you said yes to him. So, a couple other things just to ponder tonight. How we talked about obedience piece here at the end. I just want to ask, is there something that you need to obey? You know, is there something God's asked you to do, maybe in the past or maybe recently, and, and you know you're supposed to do it, but you've got, you've got lots of buts. You got lots of buts. So I just want to ask you, you know, just to think about that and to give that up to God tonight while you're while you're sleeping. And, you know, I saw this in the psalmody book. This is the book that Pastor Ray is wanting us to start. This is actually a course, you guys. So if you guys are interested in taking the actual course, it's like 12 weeks, right? 12 weeks and um, beautiful, beautiful course. I think Pastor Ray has taught from it. But I did read this quote in here. Oops. Um... I loved this. It says, people are waiting to be freed by your obedience, by your worship. Mm. Yeah. There's people waiting out there for us to obey him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, the freedom of nations are dependent on your obedience. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's pretty heavy. 
you know, I even think it goes back to Paul and Silas when they were worshiping in, in the jail, remember, in Acts, what was that, Acts 16? You know, oh, and all they did was worship, and all they did was bow down, and then the jail, like, bust open. Oh, my goodness. That all gets, the prison doors were open. Yep. And there was salvation. You know, so there's there's people waiting for your worship. And when I say worship, I'm talking about that obedience piece. Like, isn't that crazy? And your worship, just your song. Your song, because we go from glory to glory as we worship, as whatever, let's put it this way, whatever you gaze upon a lot. Like, are you guys on TikTok? Anybody on TikTok? Oh, you guys are holier than me. <laughs> you guys are way holier than me, and I'm up here. But TikTok is a colossal waste of time, okay? Can we just say that? But whatever you're gazing on... Whatever you're gazing on, remember that little piece I said, close your eyes, look up into the throne room. That's what you will be transformed into. So that's what I mean when I say your worship will change. It'll change yourself, but it'll change nations. Do you, sorry, is there something you want? Yeah, oh, do you have a word? Uh, no, just, um, just to say that you said that that's uh, such a significant um, message when you talked about people just looking into the throne room, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you and you literally said people are relying on you and your worship mm -hmm. um, to change lives. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the key parts of my testimony. I was 30 years old, grew up um, well cared for, lacked nothing, had the world by the tail, but I still felt there was something missing. And so my journey to find Jesus was full of just, you know, grace. But one of the key things that I share with people um, that just came back to me when, when you worded it that way, I actually had a deeper revelation of what I actually witnessed. Um, We walked into a church that was just set up in a school gymnasium on a Sunday. And we walked in and worship was started. I was about 30 years old, you know, very practical and great, you know, not, nothing to complain about, but I just, you know, there's still that, that curiosity. And we walked into a, I would call it a pretty unorthodox setup. Like I, it, my mind was kind of blown. It's like, this can't be a church. It's in a gymnasium. <laughs> These people just showed up and had a space. And they had flags. And they had, they had flags. I came from a Lutheran church. <laughs> so I, I, we walked in, and the church was very tiny, very small. They only needed half the gym, so they kept the back half, the lights off, and they just kind of gathered around half of the gym. And I walked in, and one of the first things I saw and the image just stays with me all the time. There was a gentleman in the back. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't sitting uh, in the chair watching the, the, the worshipers doing their thing. He was in the back, totally on his own, and his hands out and his head back. And I believe he was, you know, gazing on the throne. And I knew nothing, you know, I, I was 30 years old, uh, you know, I, I, I think two decades prior to that, I remembered hearing Jesus loves me, yes I know, you know, uh, had very little exposure to the church, but in that moment I walked in really not knowing anything about, you know, the Bible. Um, but I witnessed somebody worshiping. Mm -hmm. I don't even think he was singing, he was just there, and there was, I had absolutely no idea what he was doing, like I didn't get it, but it was such an impactful part of my life, I knew that was completely legitimate, and it was a key part of changing my life. That's how simple it is for each and every one of us. Yeah. That's how much impact it can have. You have no idea. He had no idea. Mm -hmm. I told him yeah. 20 years later, <laughs> we ran into him. I said, you know, I, I, I share who you are in my, in my testimony. 
-hmm. And he was flabbergasted because he had no idea. He was in the back where the lights weren't even on, Mm -hmm. in the gymnasium, just looking at the throne room, just worshiping. Mm -hmm. It was as simple as that. So, Thank you for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, do you want to share too? Yeah, you know, when you uh, spoke of someone's obedience being key to your salvation, uh, it's now 50, oh boy, I have to do the math. Anyway, a very long time ago, 50 plus years, someone, I used to work for Manitoba Telephone System, and one of the guys, and a salesman, the Lord, uh, I was a charismatic Mennonite. <laughs> He'd come. In any case, the Lord told him there was someone at MTS who was suicidal. He should pray for them. So he began praying for this unknown person. Now, he never did tell me how long he had been praying. He was a very private kind of guy when I did get to know him. But he was praying. And one day he's flipping through our internal phone book and the Lord highlights a name. This is who you're praying for. So he had a name. So now he's got a name to pray for. And he prayed, and again, I don't know how long he had been praying for me specifically by name, but somewhere in there, that was when I was born again. And I walked into a, and I had noticed this guy around the cafeteria. You know, he looked like a Mennonite with the beard, and I noticed that he stopped and prayed before he ate his lunch. I I just, I'd I'd seen him. So I walk into this full gospel business meeting, the new, uh, somebody invited me to the meeting, and here's Jake at the door taking tickets. And I walk up to him and I said, and he has a tag on, so I had, Jake, hi, I'm Ralph Beamish. And there's this pause, like he's catching his breath or something. Like, here's this guy he's been praying for in a full gospel business meeting. His obedience to pray is the the number one key thing in the fact that I'm here today. Yeah, yeah. And a little teaching thing um, about being commanded to worship. Uh, when the Lord commands to worship, it's uh, in the New Testament, it's almost always in the subjunctive mood. I'm not a great scholar, I have textbooks. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's an invitation to participate. Less, not so much an imperative that you have to do. It's an invitation to worship. Um, and the reason, and not because he's got a big ego that he needs us patting his back and make, making nice and whatever. God doesn't need that. But what he's doing is if we will worship what we are looking at, you were talking about what you gaze upon is what you become. So like, now I don't know if they still do it, but hockey coaches used to really play up uh, Gretzky. You know, they get all the players to think about, follow his example, and if they were paying attention to, to Wayne Gretzky, they became more like him. And that's exactly what the Father is doing in our uh, in asking us to worship Him. Because if we do, and our attention is on Him, we'll become more like Him. I just want to go to a scripture. I think it's 2 Corinthians 3. 
Let me just check here, 318. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. So that's what Pastor Ralph there was sharing. And that's 2 Corinthians 3, 18. So, I guess just to kind of repeat, we're in a great love story. Amen. Jesus just, he deserves all of our worship, our love, and devotion. And if you're finding yourself a little dried out in your life, just remember that little sit to go repeat. I think that's just a quick little thing to kind of remember when you're just going about your, your everyday life. So just some of the questions that, that I was asking you to ponder was, where are you on this journey? Is there something you need to obey? Can you say you've done all Jesus has asked you to do? And something I was thinking about was what are the top three desires of your heart? Is Jesus even in there, right? What's holding you back? Just some little things that get you thinking. And what, who do you love the most? And why? And it's okay to repent, you know. It's okay if you're feeling like, okay, maybe I, I need to just adjust my sails a little bit. You know, David, like I was saying before, he was he was quick to repent. You know, like he was not some perfect guy. He did a lot of things that were sinful, but he was quick to repent. So that might be something you want to take to God tonight too. So I'm just going to pray and then we're going to do some worship. How does that sound? <clears throat> So I just thank you, God, for this time of teaching tonight and sharing and and for your word tonight, Lord. <clears throat> I just pray, God, that, you know, whatever was said here tonight, whatever needs to be adjusted would be adjusted and everything that sticks would be of you, the, the Lord. And um, I just pray, God, you would just give us a passion, a passion for your word, a passion for your name, a passion for you, that you would just bring us into deeper hunger for you again, Lord. You would refresh us. <clears throat> excuse me and I just pray God for a returning to our first love where we have you know maybe maybe we're a little lukewarm and we know what that says <laughs> in, the, in the word it says you know if you're lukewarm then he'll spit you out of his mouth that's a that's a tough it's a tough thing that's a tough word so I just pray, God, that we wouldn't be lukewarm people, but that we would catch on fire again. And and even if you know, like there's there's some, you know, there's still a little fire burning there. There's still some embers there. I just pray, God, your your breath would just blow across those embers in our hearts tonight, God, and just light us aflame again for you, Lord. That your fire would fall in our hearts, not only to burn out the dross, God, but to just give us a passion for you again passion and I pray that you would just bring us into that deeper deeper level of intimacy with you it was really interesting last time I came here I was I was praying about like for prophetic words for people and um it's weird like as soon as I turn I don't know what street that is off the highway but I, that's where I get all these words and I saw this picture I shared a bit with with pastor um Ray tonight but I just want to share it here to encourage people that um that I really believe this place is in growth mode and he was showing me that but I saw a picture of this building and I don't have the full interpretation but I saw like a fire a whirlwind of fire coming up from it and there was an eagle over top of it which wasn't getting burned <laughs> but it was it was like this huge whirlwind of fire and so I just thank you for that, God. I know that's a good thing, um, that he's coming to this place, place with growth, with the fire of the Holy Spirit. The eagle to me speaks of just, I felt like he was calling people up to a higher level. Mm. 
and I almost saw like this like where the fire was and the eagle was it was almost like puzzle pieces at the top above it like almost like the sky was puzzle pieces and it was like they were starting to crack open like break open so this is all good guys <laughs> this is all good this is an amazing place to be I also saw that worship is going to increase here that there's there's um it actually you know who I saw was was Bruce he's not here I have a word for him too but was I saw Bruce being replicated across the stage. I saw like, cause I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my mind. What, who is that person? Like he was like the same person was being replicated. It was like guitar players just going across the stage. So I know there's gonna be an increase in worship, an increase in worshipers coming here. But I think what Bruce um, represents is that heart, that heart of David. Amen. And that there's a purity, a purity of worship here. And that that's going to increase the purity of worship, the worshipers, the actual people, that that's just all going to increase. Amen. I think that fire is about purity as well, but about passion and burning and that it's like, it's like, yeah, I feel like you would say, come up a little higher, just come up a little higher. Yeah. And that's all. And then I just had a word for Bruce, which I'll tell him another time, but. Well, thanks, guys. I hope I can sing a little bit. Shall we worship? I mean, we've been worshiping, but shall we worship musically? Yeah, Bruce and Cheryl are going to be preaching here the first time tomorrow morning. That's exciting. I first fruits, that. and he's being, they're going to be duplicated, like you're saying, with the eagle. And they're, and they're going to be preaching and speaking on covenant. Ooh. And I think that's awesome when you're seeing the duplication cool. of covenant. Oh. And when you're talking about the fire and the... Yeah. Going above, I was uh, I was seeing Ezekiel's wheel. Oh. Ezekiel's wheel. Wow. And the eagle, and the wow. Ezekiel was of all the wheels interchanging wow. in fire, and uh, that's a place of authority, but it's also a good place to be. So I, I thank the Lord for the prophetic. Yeah. I thank uh, you know, you know, for Trevor and Tiffany to to come and to bless this house. Thank you. And we, uh, uh, we're, we're Apostle uh, Vincent Poole from uh, Houston gave a word for this house when it, when it was starting. He says, Lord, I, I see the fire and I see this house being a house of healing. So you'll see that on our website. And as the prophetic words, as the prophetic continues, but the apostolic nature of all, but also the, the nature of the multiplication of the 60, uh, 80, 40, 60, 100 fold, uh, you know, it, it all has to work together. Mm -hmm. All five fold have to work together and in the growth of not only here in this area, but all around the world. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this? Yeah, you have one. You have one. Well, you prophesied it when you are here in January. Yeah, where did you get that? Well, that was painted... Um, 34 years ago when um, I gave my first sermon in prison by a person by the name of Patrick Hunter. He's out now. And I, I preached on Psalm 1, Ezekiel 47, and Revelations 22 too. So this is what he painted. And uh, when, when he painted it, I said, I'll be back next week. I, I would like you to uh, paint what I've, what I've just spoken on. So he painted this into being approximately 34 years ago in prison. He's one of our main intercessors. When you meet him, he's an awesome guy. He's coming. And uh, so when you were on top of uh, Aquifer here, we're talking about the springs of living water, and you were just prophesying this last January. And uh, so this has been hanging, and I said, we've got to put it here because of the prophetic word uh, coming alive yeah. and, and the river. Yeah. And... One of the things that you were that excites me is uh, you know the Psalmody book or that that that's Apostle Charlotte Baker that wrote that uh, th that helped the person he, she was the one that first came out with it the person in South Africa wrote it but she's the one that trained him so she's also the individual that was at North Battleford and then went to King's Temple and um, started the first worship center in. Um, United States, North America, out of North Battleford, called the King's Temple, and that's that's the um, 
mantle, if you will, of worship. I, I know you maybe you've got a heart in your place for her. Yeah. So I just thank you, Lord, for the mantle that was poured upon Leslie and I. We just say, pour that same mantle right now upon Trevor and Tiffany. That same mantle of worship. That same mantle of understanding that you have poured out, that you poured out for years and years upon us, but so many others. I thank you, Lord, for that same mantle of teaching, the same heart for worship and the lifestyle for worship. Let it be transferred now. Let it be poured out now to this couple in your precious name. Amen. Amen. When you were preaching up here and teaching, I just saw, I just saw the life of everything that Pastor Shard was teaching it to us for so many years coming alive in you, Tiffany, Trevor. Bless you on your journey from this point on. Bless you on your journey in birthing worship back into the body of Christ of the altar of a holy, 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 holy ecclesia of churches around the world in holiness, worshiping in spirit and in truth. Bless the both of you. Bless you for your heart for worship and your lifestyle of loving worship. And Pastor Charlotte said, Trevor, the greatest worship that you can do is worship in silence. Mm. Just worship in silence and hear, and hear the rhythm of heaven. Hear the rhythm and the heartbeat of the Father. Just listen. And you will hear the rhythm. You'll hear the peace of the Father coming a wave upon wave upon wave upon wave of his beloved. Mm. Just receive. You are such both worshipers. To birth worship into a body, into the body of Christ. I thank the Lord for the five virgins that kept their wicks clean. I thank you for that they kept their oil there and ready to go. And I thank the Lord that those those five are going to be blessed. And we're going to be hungry and we're going to go, want to go deeper. I, in, in what the teaching is going to be from this day forth on whatever it is you have for Trevor and Tiffany. But I thank the Lord that of the shaking of the other five that are going to awaken, that are going to awaken, that are going to awaken to the shaking of heaven coming onto earth because time... The time and the season is now, saith the Lord. This is the time of the intercessors of Issachar. This is the month of I.R. And this is the time that we must come alive. And I am awakening. I am awakening those who are sleeping. This is the last call. This is the last call. Awaken. Let your hearts be awakened and be in rhythm with mine, says the Lord thy God. Because I desire... I desire, I desire that you are so precious unto me. Awaken in resurrection life. Awaken in the lifestyle of worship that brings eternal life and joy. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed, my beloved. And for you that have fallen asleep, I'm shaking the inside now. I'm shaking you because I love you. Because the former things of the former things, yes, they are good. But it is now and it is this new shaking that is this new wine. Because I am pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. The good and the bad are receiving it. 
Are you going to be opening your hearts? And that the heart will be filled. And the hardened hearts will become a, a flesh, a heart that will receive. My beloved, my beloved, my desire, you are my desired. You are my desire. And this house, says the Lord thy God, is greater in love and compassion than the former house. But the former house is strong. It has a foundation. But it is in this new house, says the Lord, that you will be birthed into the worship and your eyes will be opened to the heavens and you shall also see the glory of the Lord. You shall see and feel the rhythm of heaven. Glory to the Lord. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. In Hebrew, it's Kadosh, 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 Adonai Elohim Sevaot. Kadosh, 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 holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And holy.
Oh 
King of kings, Lord of lords, you be right. And everything you do is pure and holy, you are righteous in all your ways. There's no one else like you. There's no one else like you. Oh, you are justice, you are truth. There's no one else like you. Jesus, you are worthy to open the scrolls. You are worthy to take them and open them. There's no one else worthy. You are worthy. You are When you walk into the room, everything changes. Oh, the blind are healed, they see. The lame walk, and hearts are healed in the presence of the good, good Father. Oh, he's walking around in our midst. He's walking. Jasper and sardius stone, and mercy surrounds your throne. Holy, holy, holy are you. Holy, holy, holy are you. King of kings, you reign now. Seated on your throne of grace, a lamb slain who took the scroll. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you. Yeah. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you. A blessing and honor.
living creatures they fall before you now with harps and bowls of incense they sing a new song to you a new song to
Soaring on the wings 
Praise the Lord. Well, let's just sing. Let's sing one more song and then we'll wrap up for tonight.
Declare his glory. The banner 
Declare his glory. Let the banner, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord thy banner, let that banner be upon your heart. Declare his glory. Acts 9.15 You are chosen vessels to carry the glory of God. That was Saul before he became Paul. He was a chosen vessel. I don't think he can get it much worse than Saul was before Paul, but God chose him. And he could choose you to be a glory carrier of holiness and righteousness, the fire of God inside. And the teaching that Tiffany has brought tonight, and the worship and the sound of the sound man. Ooh, he's got the ear of heaven. I'm just going to end with the one scripture. Almost the, well, I think it was almost the last scripture that Tiffany gave us, but pretty close. 2 Corinthians 3. I'm going to do, she went right to 18, but I'm going to do 16, 17, 18. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified and then another one. But whenever a person turns in repentance, and she called that out today in worship, in repentance to the Lord, the veil is stripped off and taken away. So if you need to repent, repent. Repent if you need to repent. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord there is liberty, emancipation from bondage and freedom. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. I'm reading out of the Amplified. And all of us with unveiled faces, because we continue to behold in the Word of God, and that's what Tiffany was talking about, the Word, the Word of God. John uh, chapter 1, 12 to 14, but it talks about the, the Word of God that come alive and, and became flesh. The Word of God that's inside you that coming alive as an, a mirror and the glory of the Lord are, are constantly being transfigured into his own, own very own image in ever increasing splendor. And from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, Yahweh, who is the Spirit. I just love you to get a hold of this. I'm going to read it out of the New Messianic Bible. Just a little flavor for you uh, theologians out there. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord Yahweh, hmm, oh, it shall turn to the Lord. Kairos. The veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord Kairos is that spirit of Ruach HaKadosh. The Holy Spirit. And where the spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh of the Lord, Kairos is, there is liberty and freedom. But we all with open face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Yahweh Kairos are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the breath of God, of the Lord Yahweh. Kairos. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word is God. That word in the beginning in Hebrew is memra. Memra. Interesting, memra. In Genesis 1 1, in the beginning. Memra. In the beginning. In the beginning. Is that where memory comes from? Memra. Yeah, it's the all memra. 
of everything coming alive with the Word of God. Because we are not only made in the image, but the substance and the DNA of God. And they've been able to look at the DNA and how the DNA breaks down and all the wonderful colors and so on. But it breaks down actually to musical notes. So even if we, even the rocks will cry out if we don't worship, but we are made in His image and substance to worship with Him in harmony for eternity. Apostolos. John 3.16 Everlasting apostolos. Worship. Never ceasing. And he wants to worship in harmony in the DNA of the Oriella Borealis. Three days ago they showed a shot of the Oriella Borealis on Facebook. And TV. You look like an angel all white. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was white. They know the different colors of all the different Oriella borealis and all the different colors of what those different colors represent and what the minerals are and the and how far they are from Earth. Wow. <laughs> we should have known white. That white was heavenly. Yeah. <laughs> They know, the scientists know that that was heaven. The pink is the closest to the Lord. Shalom, pink is the, pre, is the, is the color of, of pink. His presence is always so close. So the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his light, his kairos, and his breath of the Ruach HaKadosh that he blew into the earth that became Adam, which is blood, which became alive. Every morning, you are alive because of the light. And the Lord give thee peace, shalom. And as Pastor Ralph taught this this afternoon, <laughs> peace is the absence of chaos. And that's where we want to be, in that perfect peace. Bless you until we see you tomorrow and next week. Bless you all. Bless you all. Good night. Thank you.